What's up everyone? This is Tyler here with Savvy Hut Tutorials. Today we'll be covering how to create a very simple dubstep wobble effect. The wub 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 you hear often in a two step beat, 140 beats per minute. My goal here is not to provide you with a finished product, but to explain the fundamentals of how to create that effect. There are many different ways to do it, but this is probably the most simple way to at least understand where the wobble begins before you start adding different effects to the beat. Without further ado, I will go ahead and play the final product. All right, let's get this tutorial started. Before we jump into this bad boy, I want to let any new viewers know that I will be moving very quickly and only focusing on the wobble effect. I do have other tutorials on my channel which go into a lot of detail about every specific thing that I do and how to create a very basic project. Once you get into FL Studio 11, that's what we're using now and it's actually just the demo version, I will create a very basic background beat. So two, three, four, clap on every other beat. Right click, we'll just do two, test it. And we won't even need the snare, so we can delete that now. What we will add in is if you go up here to channels, add one, scroll down to where you see 3x OSC for three times the oscillator. So left click that, we'll bring it up over here. Let's test to see what that sounds like by clicking Q on our keyboard. All right, not too much like a dubstep wobble. It sounds more like an organ. So first thing I'm gonna do is put this on a separate pattern. So I'll go up here to pattern, hover over it, scroll up. And now the 3X OSC is on a separate pattern. That's where we'll begin creating it. First thing we will do is go into oscillator one and change that to the saw, which is the first, second, third, fourth one from the left. Oscillator two will do the same thing as well as oscillator three. The next thing we'll do is go up here to course or CRS that you see up here on oscillator one and left click, drag it all the way down to the left. You'll notice up here in the left hand corner, it'll show you where you are. So I think it was negative 24 semitones. See up there, it says oscillator course one. If I left click, hold it down, negative 24 semitones. Same thing with oscillator two and oscillator three. Make sure all three are on negative 24 semitones. Let's hear what that sounds like. Getting a little bit closer, but the next thing we'll do is fine tune this just a bit. We'll go up here to the fine and oscillator one section, left click, hold it down, drag it over to about negative 20 cents. Next, go down here to oscillator two, left click, drag it to about positive 20 cents. Let's hear what that sounds like by hitting Q. A little bit closer. The final thing we'll do is go into our 3X OSC by right clicking and clicking piano roll. You'll see it zooms us in very far, but I wanna hover over this, left click, hold it down and zoom out to where I can see at least my first two measures. And I'll begin adding the notes really quick. So first I'll start with D4 and hear what that sounds like. It's a bit lower. I will add a slide that'll slide up. I'll put the slide on A4. You'll notice the difference between a regular note and a slide note is this triangle that appears without another note below it or above it or anything like that. It will not make any sounds, so make sure that it's attached to something. And to get the slide note, you go up here to the triangle looking symbol that was just on the note and left click and add it to the measure. So this whole note would be a slide. I'll show you what that sounds like. It'll slide up this note, but stop immediately after because another slide note can't do anything if it doesn't have a note to slide from. You see it kind of went up in the end there. But let me fill out the rest of these notes here to show you uh, the overall pattern that will be. All right, so let's hear what this sounds like. You'll notice it goes and it'll keep the note. It'll be a slight jump because there's a split here, but it will do a slide up to A4 and then keep A4, jump back down to F4, slide up to C5, etc. In order to get this same, let's say uh, I delete this section right here, click the select tool. In order to get this same pattern here, all I did was copy it over here, highlight everything, hit Control C and Control B. We'll paste it in the next chunk over the exact same notes. 
So let's hear what that sounds like. All right, so now let's add the wobble effect to it. Go up here to your sequencer. Sometimes you'll have to double click on 3x OSC to get the channel settings to pop back up. Go to the effects and slide up to one. The problem can be if your other, if you left the instruments kick, clap, and hat, those are probably already assigned to different channels. Let's get that off of there. So left click on kick, you'll see it's assigned to channel one as well. Hover over it and scroll down to where you have two dashes. So now there is no channel assigned to kick. Same with clap, it's assigned to channel two. Scroll down twice, no assignment. We do this just to make sure that anything we do on insert one doesn't affect any of our other instruments, just to make sure they're all either on their own separate effects channel or they have no effect at all. So now we're all focusing on insert one here in the master mixer that I have popped up. And the only effect I will add is left click and go to Fruity Fast LP. You can kind of play around with it while you're listening to the song and let's see what that kind of sounds like. Which isn't the best example, but to give you an idea of what we will be doing, cutting it in and, and cutting it back out. So in order to add that to the instrument itself, there are a couple ways to do that. What I will do for this tutorial is simply right click and go to edit events. Another option is creating an automation clip directly below it, but we'll do that some other time. For now, we'll do edit events, left click, and you'll see it brings you up to another piano roll looking box, but there is no piano roll. You can get in here and begin drawing if you want, but it's gonna be very difficult to get the notes exactly where you want them to be. To show you how this affected the note though, I will play it. Not too much of an effect, but you can hear it goes So let me zoom out first by left click holding it so I can see those first four measures or so. And I will go up here to where my little finger will come out, right click and highlight a section. Next, I will go to the drop down little arrow button here, which is in the upper left hand corner. Left click that, go down to tools and then select LFO. You'll see it automatically put whatever my last setting was in there, which was, I believe, a two-step beat, um, and that's the speed. So if you right-click on speed in LFO, you'll see all your different options from one-step beats, two-step beats, you know, four-step, etc. You can get in here and adjust it on your own, and you'll see it kind of goes up and down by how fast the beats can get. But the easiest way to do it is if you want a specific, not a random, but a very specific speed, you right-click and let's say choose two sets for example. The range will affect how much of a difference it'll cut off, whether it's vut, vut, or what, what. What I mean is this, let me show you really quick. You can sound, you can hear it cuts it completely out and brings it back in. If I bring the range down, however, the effect will be barely noticeable. Awesome. So to apply that to your note, click accept. So the next thing I'll do is go through and add the different wubs throughout the measures. So just make sure nothing's selected. To unselect, just right click at the end, drag it over. Select this first chunk here, left click LFO tools. Put the speed to about um, four step. Accept, get rid of this, right click, drag it over. Let me do this next chunk here. I'll add a two step beat, two steps and accept. And for this final four, I will add one step, LFO speed, one step, accept. For this next chunk, I will add, let's see, four step, except the next half, we'll add two step, except, and for this next chunk here, let's first of all, 
Let's go ahead and see what this sounds like. So click stop twice to begin from the beginning. All right, for this next part, we will create kind of an angled up look. So it'll go and drop down and go back up. So hover and get as close as possible to this section right here. Right click it, you'll see it kind of highlights a little bit and we're going to drag it up to about here and let go. And then we'll start again down to about here. So I just right clicked, hold right click down though and drag it up to, we'll say about here. So it's gonna, we'll hear what that sounds like. All right, next we'll add two step beat. It's actually increased a little bit. You can manually get in here and change and edit the way these are. So I, up until this point, I've been right clicking and specifically choosing a certain step Another way to do that is scroll up or down to increase or decrease the amount of steps. So I just scroll down a little bit to get three steps here. So you can kind of see it goes up and then down to about there's where I want to be. So I just scroll down just a little bit. And the next chunk here, I'm going to add, let's see, go ahead and accept that. Right click. This, Final piece here, I will make it one step. And accept. So let me adjust this just a bit. Let me get into my tools, the LFO, a little bit more customized. Let me Accept and then adjust this, just speed this up just a bit. I think one step's a bit slow. Something like that, accept. The final thing I wanna do is to make sure this is a dubstep beat, increase the tempo to 140 if, if you have not already done that. That's a typical dubstep tempo. Just adjusting a little bit more now that I know what the tempo. All right, I think you get the idea. Let me go to the playlist. You'll see it's completely blank. So if I try to click song, nothing would play. Let me scroll down to pattern two first. Make sure you're on pattern two. Left click and you'll add the pattern two. You'll see here the cutoff is actually in the pattern. So you can kind of see where it's gonna bring it in and bring it out. And the last thing I did was in pattern one, we added the beat that we made at the very beginning. So if you play it all together, it sounds like this. <laughs> And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. To give you a very quick example of how this can easily sound a lot better, I will go back to the 3OXC, make sure I'm pattern two, and add one effect. This was a VST plugin that I brought in, and I've got a tutorial explaining how to import VST plugins and add them to your different instruments. Let me just show you one very quickly that changes the sound of the wobble effect dramatically. Left click, add, it's called Pollen LE456, it's free to download. I'll actually include a link in the description below. But hear what this sounds like. I haven't adjusted anything in this effect. I've just added it to the wobble. And if I just switch that to channel A, we'll hear what that sounds like. <laughs> For now, that's all I will show you for this tutorial. 
again, it was just the basic how to create the wobble effect. I know a lot of you have been asking about that. I will come up with a song that sounds a lot better than this and then show you more of what the effects are while quickly going over this basic feature. So thank you so much for sticking with the video. I hope you learned a lot. If you could, please click the subscribe, the like button, all that stuff, and I will see you next time. Bye. I'll go ahead and show you exactly what we'll be creating in the end and quickly go through create it, explain what I'm doing and how you can create the same thing. All right, here it goes.